Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Los Angeles-based jazz pianist Connie Hahn. We caught up with her in Los Angeles in late April 2020 during the COVID-19 quarantine to discuss this new world and her brand new CD, Iron Startlet. It's another great CD. She opened up and we listened. Enjoy. You know, the interesting thing about what you're doing right now, obviously, live jazz is done, but what I find interesting is a lot of musicians that released material around the time this started happening. It has to be bittersweet because there's a part where people are going to be reaching out for art and music in a different way than they did before. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, by the way, I love the new album. Um, I've already played it on the show, so I've, I've, I've been a fan, you know, for quite a while. So Thank you. To me, it's a tricky debate because it's very popular right now in – the jazz scene to be putting out a lot of content, live stream content, and a lot of that content is great. Uh, but then when you get so much of something, it can oversaturate, devalue the art. You know, there's a very fine line because, like, yeah, it's really important to give art lovers the access that they need, especially those who, you know, dedicate most of their free time to going out live. Like, I totally get that. But at the same time, there's not that cover fee, you know. There's not that, like, uh, ability to fund it in the same way. Sure, there's, like, a PayPal kind of thing, but that's usually, like, a donation. It's like a, you can still view it for free, but if you want to support the artist, you can. And that, to me, is the tricky part. So uh, I've taken a more uh, conservative stance with, doing that, and um, I'm actually, you know, taking this time as an opportunity to refresh a more introverted perspective, a.k.a. finally being able to practice in the woodshed, because, man, these past two years, it's been amazing. I've had so many great opportunities to perform with my trio, and uh, I haven't had as much time as I as I want, I, as I wanted to really uh, flesh out the language that I'm developing and that I have already developed, but you know, as an artist's way is, their way is to evolve and to continue to mature and uh, become more of who they are as they get older. So, you know, I, I definitely indulged myself quite a bit in, in studying a lot of music just in the past few months and uh, ready, you know, ready to hit the ground even even harder, you know, hopefully when things get back to normal. I don't know when that will be. That's the scary part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the one thing I've thought about is, you know, jazz isn't, uh, there's not a lot of money in it. A lot of musicians are doing it out of love. What do you think about innovation during this time? Whenever people start hitting the studio and things start coming out, do you see a birth of a new innovation, some idioms, some things that we have, just innovation, so to speak? Well, I think in any times of strife and chaos during, you know, in society, like, there's always a human response to it, a response that's born out of passion and um, out of suffering. And we saw that, you know, post-World War II with jazz. I mean... I think it's coming. I definitely think it's coming. As far as my position on innovation, um, I think the best way to put it is that when you are living through a time when change is happening, it's hard to see it from a an eagle's an eagle eye point of view. Like, you know what I mean, an aerial point of view. So I stayed extremely true to, you know, my core values as a jazz musician to be as fluent in the jazz language as possible while also uh, being in the moment. Because to me, when you play, when you proclaim to play jazz music, your primary purpose is to be in the moment. That to me is the spirit of this music. So whether you're interpreting that within the idiom of traditional jazz or through more modern explorations, as long as that philosophy is present, uh, I, I think we have somewhere to go. Um, but, you know, this has just been an ongoing debate about uh, innovating through 
deconstructing the language and building it from the bottom up or innovating through evolution of the jazz language. And that is, the latter is where I'm at. And um, that's what I have tried to stay true to uh, in evolving, you know, my voice within, you know, the language of, I should define that language because I'm being kind of vague, uh, defining that language through the, uh, through post-bop, bebop, hard bop, you know, that, that language that has the black soul essentially at, at its core um, within an acoustic instrumental format uh, where, you know, swinging is the most important thing, even if you're not swinging in a literal sense, even if you're playing different styles, you're still keeping that, like, legacy of, you know, Elvin Jones alive, keeping that rhythm really deep. So that's how I look at it. Well, I, I guess another question that I have about the end of this, when we, you know, because we're going to get to the point where we're going to have live music and, you know, obviously we're still shrouded in ambiguity, but we know it's going to happen. So the, my, my question is, what do you hope both the audience and the musician realizes during this time away, what revelations do you hope we get so when we come back, we're, we're, we're better and stronger? The main lesson to learn from this insane time is to be grateful to be alive and to never take anything for granted, especially the people that you may disagree with and the ideas that you may disagree with. I think it's so important that people realize now that, you know, these past three years have just been, like, tumultuous in terms of, you know, political strife, cultural strife, divisions within the jazz community about what jazz is really supposed to be. And I really think that coming out of this, people will be more grateful and people will be generally more productive and respectful and enthusiastic to engage in dialogue about uh, ideas and art and and philosophies that you know don't necessarily that aren't necessarily compatible. So I think that mindset in itself will birth a lot of inspiring content and a lot of inspiring art. And once this is all over, I don't know if there's a clear line that there's going to be set, but you know, listeners and musicians are going to be clamoring to get in front of one another and you know, share that connection that they once did just a few months ago. Well said, well said. Well, hey, Connie, thank you for for getting back with me and being a part of this. I'm really, part of this is really capturing the new recording, but it's also to just to have an open conversation about it. Yeah, I'm totally down. Plus, it's nice to be able to talk to people in general since, like, we're in quarantine. <laughs> Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Los Angeles, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Connie for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.